All right, today we're gonna to be breaking down Atlanta Phase's favorite S&D strat of MW2. It came on Embassy on their offenses, their best map. I believe they were 14 and four on it throughout the entire year, and they were just dominant on offenses using this strat. So let's get right into it. What's cool about this strat is basically they did this all year, and you can go all the way back to Major One Raleigh. This VOD is actually from the LG Academy match, one of their first matches of the entire year, and they had this strat going and you'll see how they adapted and evolved through this and how opponents adapted and evolved and how they were able to shift what they were trying to do and make a little bit of adjustments so that they keep using the same basis of the strat. So as you can see here, this is Major One Raleigh, literally the bare bones of Search and Destroy at this event. And what we have is their basic default. There was two separate variations of this default, so we'll go through both of them. So both of them are gonna be B pushes, but here's how they differ just slightly. So in this one, uh, Abizi is going to go through the outside from planners to the bomb site. He's gonna have Cell watch over him. As you can see, he's watching the back alley in this position. Then you're gonna have Slasher, who's gonna be top PD, watching anyone that might be top AC. And then you have the bomb carrier Simp, who's gonna jump out of the left side window and help Abizi out on bomb. This jump out of the window was pretty much patented by Atlanta Phase. And then you'd see a lot of teams doing the same type of thing uh, because what you were able to do is once you were able to jump out here, it was first pretty hard to kill you, especially if you had someone in top PD watching over top AC for you. But not only was it hard for people on the cross to kill you, you were also basically on a head glitch right here at the front palm. So anyone that might be P1 or trying to flank this way quick and try and kill anyone off the bomb site, you had a, a pretty nice head glitch on them. So once you jump out, you can use the head glitch to your advantage and then jump onto bomb if you had the opportunity to. So we'll play this round out now. As you can see here, Abe gets the bomb for free because he has number one watching over him. Simp jumps out of the left window and now he's using this palm uh, heady as cover for him while he's diving, but he can also use that as a head glitch in case there was anyone P1. And then he goes and tries to work onto bomb with Abe. So again, this is super bare bones at the beginning of the year. So not many teams knew what to do in terms of countering this. Uh, so they were able to get a free bomb plant pretty much every time and free site control and then play post plan and post plan on this map was just super easy because you can just plant for top PD. As long as you were able to catch anyone pinching your base, you were pretty much set for the round. Now this is another variation that they would do and this is where Abe would take the bomb and jump out the left window instead of Simp. This was a lot more common for them because they can spread out the map a little bit more, not take as many chances with such a quick rush onto B. And in this case, instead of Simp taking bomb and jumping out, he would be playing these bottom halls waiting for anyone to pitch through bathroom or, or through these halls onto PD. And then Austin would be playing super back towards the back of their base, watching anyone that might be taking a, a more deeper pinch. Um, in this case, Celium would be top PD trying to get Abe out onto uh, the B site by watching top AC over him. And actually in this specific strat, both of them would double nade onto the top AC just to stunt anyone that might be looking over there and make sure that they can't get an easy line of sight onto Abe while he's jumping out. So that was one of the big counters. If you can just get top AC without any contestion or with a trophy and you just start ironing, you know, this right window, it's just an easy pick if you can get your shots off. So the big thing for Atlanta phase was just making sure that no one can get that easy line of sight on whoever was jumping outside of that window and trying to get onto the site for that easy access to the bomb plant. So let's play this round out. As you see, both of them nade onto top AC. Since it's round one, no trophies. So Octane is going to be the first blood. And then from this, he actually uses his stun, which is pretty important for this specific strat because you can bank it off of this palm building into this little corner in case anyone was playing super aggressive inside that corner and could really easily take you out as you were jumping uh, for that palm heady. And as you can see here, we play the round out. Abe jumps over. He's now first glances while he's diving, but he uses that prone to cover behind this palm uh, head glitch, and now he can get onto bomb for free. He just has to wait out anyone that might be in orange. So playing this position was super important because you have to sound horror and make sure that you can manipulate anyone that might be playing inside orange here, and, and Ibizi was one of the best at it. As you can see here, He's going to be playing this super passive, uh, just waiting it out, and then he can just play with all amongst his teammates. So he can get Cell that's top PD here to watch over him. And Envoy actually passes him without knowing that he dove across. So uh, pretty lucky in, in that situation because if he just looked left, he would have killed him. 
but once he gets the kill on Simp there, Abizi can trade that out. And as you can see here, Abizi was just one of the best players in terms of getting that B site control, whether it was you know fast pushing onto the site and making it play back alley or making it play in this corner or making it play into orange. He was the first blood monster, especially on this map. And Atlanta face was just always relying on him making plays towards this area because it, it either was Simp jumping out and he was making a play back alley or whether he was jumping out uh, and trying to make a play alone. He was just so important for them on the map and you can just see his impact with these first bloods that he was getting. Here's another example of the more slower strat with Abe going across to the bomb site right away. And this obviously they would use a trophy in this situation. Uh, this time it's Slasher watching in the back alley for him instead of Cell. And he gets onto the bomb site super quick. As you can see, Simp is gonna be the one taking bomb here. He's gonna have help from Cell that's top PD, gonna be watching over him. Uh, top AC, I believe he does it from uh, the right side here instead of the left window. What they're just doing is making sure that they can support Abe on site to try and get a first blood here and just waiting for him to make a play to start initiating everything. And as you can see here, he starts making his way around back alley. He sees Sib on the back side of this top AC, gets the kill. And as he's doing that, uh, Simp is able to jump across if we can run it back real quick here. Simp is able to jump across uh, just like usual and make sure that he gets onto the site. You even see number seven, uh, Mac, try and get shots on him, but he's not able to kill him because he's able to do it so fast. And from there, uh, number one has over him and he's just in this corner. He can now go for a free bomb plant because he has that support with number three on that back alley. So in case anyone that's challenging top AC, number one's gonna see him. And if in case anyone's back alley, you know, Abe is already there. And then you have Slasher on the pinch watching for any quick pinch uh, like Pred is gonna be trying to do over here. So again, just taking that initial bomb site control with those playmaking abilities uh, that Abizi has. Now you give you guys a little bit of background story. These guys were doing that same type of strat for basically like three months. I would say from major one to major two to three, they were just hammering that strat on a lot of their offenses. I would say like 80% of their offenses were one of those two strats. You know, whether it was Sim taking the bomb and jumping out with Abe going to the bomb right away, or whether it was Abe jumping out with Simp playing in the halls. You know, they were doing some type of that strat, just a little bit of variations with where they were playing. Uh, you know, if you're talking about Slasher and, and Cell, you know, Slasher could have been back PD over here, or Cell could have been top office, or Cell could have been top PD here, or Slasher could have been over here. And, you know, they were just always switching it up just very, very minutely but the same basis of the strat was always the same. So what what was the reason why would they change it up? You know, eventually teams caught on and started to counter. You know, this is a specific situation where we countered this by just team shotting this cross. And as you can see here, both number three, Kyler, and number one, Dan, were both team shotting anyone that was jumping out the window because we knew that they liked to do this. And that's what we do. We get a free first blood on Simp trying to jump out of this window. You know, another strat that you could do was taking a sniper, either P1 or top AC, and just looking over and trying to either play the person that was jumping out of the bomb site or play uh, the person that was looking over him and, and try and get a first blood that way. So either those were types of counters or even uh, a full B counter like we were talking about the other day in that video. If you do a full B counter on this, you know that's pretty detrimental for them because if they're jumping out, they're jumping out to all four of you guys on the bomb site already. So a lot of different counters and you would see teams catching on. They weren't winning as many offensive rounds, but what do you do as Atlanta? You're gonna try and adapt and fix it yourself by doing something a little bit different. So one of the best ways of just trying to make it a little bit different is just to slow it down a little bit. You know, a lot of the times they were doing quick hits where they were jumping out of the window within the first, you know, 20, 25 seconds. But what happens if you just spread the map out a little bit? You know, Austin Slasher is very known for producing spreads on his offenses with, with the teams that he plays search with. And what they did was just basically do the same type of thing, but delayed a lot further. So you're trying to get the defense guessing just a little bit, you know, oh, they didn't jump out, you know, 20 seconds into the round, maybe they're doing something else. But what do you know, later on in the round, they're just gonna be doing the same thing after they've already defaulted to, into a spread. So if we play this round out, as you can see here, Abizi being aggressive instead of 
going through the bomb site right away or jumping out. He's gonna be playing out the bathroom door trying to chow out and see if anyone's pushing P1 aggressively because that was something that, you know, you could also counter a phase with. If you were able to push in aggressively through P1 and try and get quickly up into their base right away through planners here, that was another you know counter to that too. So they were trying to counter the counter to their initial strat by doing that. And from this, it's more of a spread offense as you can see with everyone playing uh, a little bit more defaulty. And then what you know, they have a pick from this, they can just do whatever they want. And what they do is they decide to go back to their bread and butter, you know, so they're taking their time a little bit, making Toronto guess. But in the end, what they're gonna do is the same thing that they've done for the past few months. What you're gonna do is have someone top PD watching over top AC. You're gonna have your two other guys that are top PD nade over to the top AC. As you can see, they're gonna stun the, top, the bottom black box and then they're gonna just jump out like they usually do and play onto the bomb site. So obviously they're able to get this kill on the top AC guy, but they're gonna do the same thing. They jump over and they play that way. And now you have a 4v1, it should be an instant win for phase. And you know, if teams started to adapt and started to really hard play for this left window, you know, what do you do? Maybe just use the right window. And that's what they do here. You know, they decided teams were starting to counter us too much and knew we were playing that left window so much. And even, you know, our player watching over us was sometimes left window. So they just say, let's go out the right window. Maybe they're not gonna be expecting that. So it's basically the same type of thing, but instead of one window, they're using the other, it still catches the defense off guard and they're able to make plays off of it. All right, again, back to our slower, more passive version of the strat. We're gonna have Slash and Abizi on this right side. He's gonna get Abizi out onto the bomb site. And once again, they're going to rely on BZ to make a play onto that beam bomb site to open things up. You know, when you have talent like that, you can pretty much rely on them to try and make plays, you know, send them out free towards that area of the map that they love to play. And if you ask BZ what his favorite area of this map was, I would 100% guarantee you that he would say within this bomb site, working orange or working back alley, because that's what he would love to do. And he excelled at it, even though teams knew that he was gonna be there. And that's something you could do with talent like that. You, you just send them out to where they were gonna go. And even if the team knows they're gonna be doing something like that, with that talent, it's still pretty hard to counter because maybe little variations come here and there. But even if you know the exact thing of what they're gonna do, they still have the talent. Uh, to outperform you sometimes. So moving out into this round, as you can see Slasher watching over that back alley, that will open it up now for BZ to activate off of that. But other than that, you still have the same type of setup, sell top PD and Simp is with the bomb here uh, playing in these bottom halls. Again, they slowed it down a little bit later in the year. This is major five. So they're not taking the bomb right away towards B. They're slowing it down just a little bit, even though they are playing a little aggressive on site, they can still take their time with a bomb carrier and start working other parts of the map as well if they needed to. So as you can see here, Abizi, he's going to be making plays. He actually, instead of going back alley, he just decides to go and, and chow front bath like this and gets a kill for it. And then as you can see here, Slasher knows his timing, knows to back up in case there's a deep flanker. And that's what he does. He gets the shots off. He doesn't get the kill there, but he gets the information and Sim can finish off the kill for him right there. 4v2, what do you know? We can just go back to our bread and butter and jump onto the site for free like we usually do. And even though Scrap gets a nice snipe onto Slasher there, what do you know? Number six making his way to top PD to jump over towards the site. That's what they do. They get the bomb down and they're able to win this round. All right, so now we're at COD Champs, the last event of the entire year. And this is a really cool little variation that FaZe had here because you know they were working fast at the beginning of the year. They took a little bit of a step back, started working the spread, working slow. But what do you know at last event of the year, what are teams expecting you to do? What you have been doing, which is working slow. So that's an opportunity where you can just change it back up on them. And the thing that they're not expecting is what you were doing at the beginning of the year and playing faster onto this same strat. So as you can see here, Abe takes the bomb. He double nades with his teammate onto the top AC. He uses his stun like he usually does. And then he's gonna go quickly outside of the window uh, and play like he did at uh, the first major. So it's pretty funny. This is literally the last offensive play for them of the entire year on this map. And he does the same exact strat that he did versus LAG Academy back all the way in December. So pretty funny that they will do that. A little bit of a variation here because instead of Cell playing top ED to try and help him out, they just need it quick and he's able to go top office to watch uh, his flank this way 
and still you have simp bottom hauls watching for any quick flanks. Uh, so they're, they're kind of merging the two strats together. And Slasher, instead of watching the deep pinch from back PD here, he goes uh, initially at the start of the round to planners like he would normally do if he was working with a BZ. Instead, a BZ jumps out of the window this time, but he's still conditioning Seattle to think that they're doing that same type of strat. So again, just a slight tiny variation in the strat keeps the defense thinking about what you're going to do. And then from there, he's gonna go to where Cell would normally go uh, and watch top AC from top PD from this right window. Once again, same type of strat. They're making sure that they get a BZ onto the site and just aiding him in getting that bomb down and trying to make a play by watching over him and watching pinches. So that's gonna do it. You know, a lot of the times you would see basically the same type of strat, but again, just little variations to keep the defense thinking, whether it was jumping out the left window, whether it was jumping out the right window, or whether it was doing that fast strat or the slow spread. Uh, the basis of what they were trying to do was always the same, but because there are little variations, it would always create a little bit of chaos uh, for the defense. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next one.